So you just plugged in your XLR microphone to Beacon Studio, and you suddenly have all of these EQ options and you're not quite sure how to use them. In this video, we're going to talk about the different band types included in Beacon Studio, as well as how to set your frequency, gain, and cue for each band. Let's jump in. So when you get your Beacon Studio and you hook it up and you plug in your XLR microphone, you're going to want to navigate to the mic chain window. To do that, in the device panel here, which is this long stretch of black bar right here, you're going to click this icon right here, which is the mic chain window, and then you're going to be greeted by this window right here. In this window, the portion that we're going to be focusing on in this video is going to be this portion down here, which has the six different band types and as well as your frequency gain and cue for each band. So the first band type that we're going to talk about is going to be the bell, which is this one right here. This is the most common one that you're probably going to use while EQing. Uh, and what it is, is it boosts or attenuates a range of frequencies. And how you adjust it is you would place the point where you want it. So for instance, I have this one set at 150 hertz, and that is the one that I consider like my bass boost basically. And so I set it to 150 hertz and I have the gain set to 1.9. And you'll notice that the teal kind of has this bell shape to it. Now you can adjust that and make it more narrow or wider by using the cue. So the higher you go on the cue, the higher value, the more narrow that that's going to be. It's important to note that when you're using bells, that the wider that they are, the more natural it's going to sound. The next band type that we're going to look at is going to be a low shelf, and that's this one right here. So what a low shelf does is that it creates a slope to favor lower frequencies at a certain point. So for instance, I have this one set at 150 hertz right now, and if I change the type right here to low shelf, you'll notice that it creates this shelf on the low end, boosting those frequencies. And the same thing with the Q. As you adjust this, you'll notice that it changes, it changes the bump and where it starts to slope down. So the higher the Q value, the bigger that that bump is going to be. The next band type that we're going to focus on is going to be a low pass filter. So a low pass filter cuts off frequencies or removes frequencies above a certain point. And the main purpose for its use is to make the bass or the low end in your, in your recording or your track to be more present or to just clean up your high ends if you don't want to, if you don't want such a high range. And so what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'm going to add a band. And then I'm going to bring this to say around 8,000. That's fine. And then I'm going to change it to low pass and just listen to the difference when I turn this on. So you'll notice immediately that a lot of that high end that I had previously is now gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over until I get to a point where I really like how much high end is coming through. So right now I have it set to about 16,000. And so that'll help cut off frequencies once they reach too high or reach a range that you find is not pleasant in your voice. The next band type that we're going to talk about is going to be the notch. And so what a notch is used for is it's used to help eliminate offending frequencies in your frequency range or that are being picked up around you. This is really good for helping to eliminate like things that noise suppression doesn't get rid of or expander doesn't get rid of, or just a general frequency that you don't like the sound of when you listen to yourself. So to demo a notch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a band and then I'm going to bring it in here into like the boxy resonance range. And I'm going to change this to notch. And you'll notice immediately that it cuts out a huge range and that's because of the cue. So this will be more aggressive the higher the cue is, which when you're typically notching out a particular frequency, you actually want the cue to be quite high because you're isolating that exact frequency. The problem with using things like notches is so if you use too many of them, you end up risking sounding like it's overprocessed. And a general good rule of EQ is to EQ light because you're just trying to enhance the features that are already there in your voice. So the next, the next band that we're going to talk about is going to be a high shelf. Uh, I actually use a high shelf in most of my EQs, and that's this point right here. And what it does is it creates a slope to favor higher frequencies based on where you put that point. So for instance, I have this at 3000. So starting at 3000, it's starting to create this slope that you see here that favors those higher frequencies and brings out that vibrance. Now, based on how you set the cue is how aggressive that slope is going to be. So say for instance, if I set this to like 2.3, you'll notice that it starts to create that slope higher up, but it also starts to push down lower end frequencies in that range or below the slope. The last band type we're going to be talking about today is a high pass filter. A high pass filter is used to cut out low end frequencies, and there's a variety of different reasons why you would do this. One is that below a certain range, which is the sub bass range, those frequencies don't really affect your voice in a way that's eligible to the human ear. So we tend to cut those up, but there's also things like subsonic rumble that, or hiss depending on the device. And that's just due from like DC current going through the device. And so 
that helps eliminate those frequencies. It also leaves a little bit room for your bass to be a little more punchy. So to set a high pass filter, what you're going to do is I actually have one set up right now in my EQ, which is right here. I set the frequency to 37 because I wanted to start really cutting off around 50 Hertz, which is in that sub bass or rumble range. And then the gain doesn't really matter for this one because it doesn't change. All it does is it cuts off at whatever you set the frequency at is where it starts to cut off. And then the Q, uh, you'll notice that if I were to adjust the Q, it would start making that cut off a lot harsher. Um, I set mine to around 0.7 to 0.6 so that it starts cutting off really at around 50 Hertz. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is the frequency gain in Q. Now we did touch on these a little bit when we were reviewing each band type and showing you how to set them, but I just wanted to give them their own section of the video so that you can fully understand what each one does and what it adjusts based on the graph that you see in the app. So. The frequency, I always consider this, like I said, this is a graph. So what part of the graph does this adjust? This adjusts the x-axis, which is the left and right. So that's where you set your frequency. So right now I have this one set to 150 Hertz and you'll see that that's right here. And then I can move it by dragging the number left and right or by dragging the point. And it'll only drag it across that axis. For the gain, if I were to look at this like a graph, the gain adjusts the y-axis. So that's the up and down. And that's going to either boost or start to cut out the frequency based on whether you go up or down. So right now I have the gain set to 2.4, which means that it's boosting it by 2.4 decibels. Now, if I wanted to go negative, I could bring this all the way down and it would start cutting out that frequency based on how low I got. And then the final thing that I want to touch on here is the Q. So the way that the Q works is that it makes the band or that point, that plot point, narrower or wider based on whether you make it higher or lower. So for instance, the Q right now on this point is set to 1.3 and you'll see that it's fairly, it's fairly wide. If I wanted to make that more narrow so that it was more isolated to a smaller range of frequencies, what I would do is I would just increase the Q and you'll see as I start to increase it, that that becomes more narrow. It's important to note when working with Q that when you go higher and you make that more narrow, it sounds less natural. Oftentimes you want to have a more natural blend. So I tend to keep my points kind of wide so that they blend more naturally to the next point. And there you have it. Everything you need to start EQing your microphone with Beacon Studio. If you have any questions, feel free to look at our knowledge-based articles that are linked down below, or you could reach out to us at support.beacon.com or join our amazing Discord community where you can interact with us directly. Thanks for watching.